Hi, it's Alison here from Ancestral Kitchen. Today I'm going to talk to you about phytic acid and oats. What is phytic acid? Phytic acid is a compound in oats, which is also in many other seeds, grains and legumes, which stores phosphorus. So why would you want to get rid of phytic acid? Phytic acid is an anti-nutrient. It stops the body from absorbing minerals. So that means if you're eating a dish with a phytic acid containing grain in it, it is likely that that phytic acid will steal any minerals that are in that dish and you won't absorb them. There is a lot of worry about phytic acid and I think it's important to remember that it's also an antioxidant, which is a positive thing. A lot of people have enzymes in their guts that can break it down and that its mineral stealing effects only apply to the meal that you're eating it with, not to the rest of the day. So how can we deactivate phytic acid? The standard advice is to soak your grains in warm water with an acidic medium. And that is because grains naturally have an enzyme in them called phytase, which can neutralize phytic acid. And the warm water and the acidity provide the best environment for phytase to do its work. But things are slightly different for oats. That's because, first of all, oats are naturally low in phytase. And second, most of the oats that come to us have had any natural phytase in them destroyed. That happens because oats have a hull that adheres to them really tightly and when that hull is removed in processing, the oat grains are damaged. That exposes an enzyme called lipase which starts to degrade the fats in the oats and can turn them rancid really quickly. So standard oats as they come to us have been steamed at a high temperature to stop that lipase doing that work and that steaming process also destroys all the phytase. So most oats that you can buy will have absolutely no phytase in them at all. So what can we do? To provide the best chances of phytic acid being removed in your steel cut or your rolled oats you have several options and my advice is to just do them all. So first of all when you're soaking your oats you can add a live starter to the soaking liquid. Scientists have shown that yeast and bacteria in live starter have phytase in them which can break down your phytic acid. Plus, by adding a live starter you'll be making the environment acidic which is the best medium for phytase to do its work. So usually I add a blob, just a spoonful of sourdough starter to my soaking oats but you could also use something like milk kefir or apple cider vinegar as long as it's not pasteurized. Secondly, you can add a phytase rich freshly ground flour to the soaking liquid. So for that, something like rye or buckwheat are both high in phytase and it has to be freshly ground because phytase is an enzyme so when you grind the grain it exposes that inside of the grain to oxygen which means the phytase will be completely degraded. So I freshly grind rye or buckwheat flour in my mock mill and add that to my soaking oats. Thirdly, use warm water, which again has been shown to allow phytase to do its work the best. And then fourthly, just leave it, give it time. When you cook the oats up, you do not need to drain them. That's a question that I get a lot. During this process, the phytase neutralizes the phytic acid. It doesn't leach into the water. So you can just tip the entire contents of your soaking oats into the saucepan. And then when you serve your oats for extra points, add something with vitamin C in, because vitamin C has been shown to have mineral absorption enhancing effects. That's all I have for you today on phytic acid and oats. If you have a question, leave it below. I do have a comprehensive video on how to make fermented oats which will cover all of the equipment, all of the setup, all of the best practices you can do to ferment your oats and then show you how to cook them and show you other things you can do with fermented oats other than just make oatmeal in the morning.